Hello. So it seems like every other year I'm trying to build some trees and you know, this is the most recent version. Uh, geometry nodes, all of these three trees here are made with the same setup. As you can see, you can get like a variety from the thick stubby trees to uh, well more like conifer types. Uh, let's take a quick look before we actually go into it. And quick disclaimer right ahead, First of all, this is going to be like a more medium or advanced tutorial. I'm a little bit pressed for time at the moment. So we're just going to go through it very quickly in theory. And uh, second of all, um, these textures are not procedural. I've just downloaded them and uh, projected them, you know, with using object coordinates or something from textures.com. Let's take a look. This is like a little bird tree. I'm going to out of random mode for now. And um, I've made this preview thing for this showcase where I can actually turn it back into curves. As you can see, it's remeshed into like a singular shape. It's very slow though to adjust these settings when it's actually remeshing in real time. So this trunk, you can adjust a couple of things. You can adjust the height of the tree. You can adjust its thickness, the amount of branches and the direction upwards or downwards. However, this very node group is a little bit too advanced for my taste for tutorial because ooh, a lot of stuff, right? So we're going to work with the simpler tree that I've prepared. Yeah, as you can see, I'm working with the finished node group today instead of just building it from scratch. I know it's not as exciting, but um, you know, another time factor here. This is all we can see right now, this curve line, the trunk. Um, the stuff that I've muted, you can ignore for now. I will address them when it's time. So curve line, that's going to be our tree. What do we want for a tree? We want branches, right? So what would you do? You would instance on points, right? You would instance some things here. So indeed, if you follow this uh, mystical line, you can see that this very curve line goes into this instance on points node. And if I unmute it, uh, you can see the first bit of magic happening. Now, um, we have two branches right now because we only have two points, the start and the end point. And these curve lines go slightly upward. I've just uh, managed their orientation by uh, dialing them in here with this end thing. You can also maybe set them to direction and uh, use that. In the bigger setup, I actually used a rotate Euler node so I can have like better control over it. But this is where you would change the direction of your trees. The um, rotation here, I'm using a value from minus pi to plus pi um, in order to get like the full 360 degrees of potential random uh, directions. And actually I could have maybe also rotated them uh, a slight bit on the other axis just for this extra bit of randomness, you know. Two branches are a little lackluster. So let's go back to the trunk and there I have added a resample curve node. Now let's unmute it and as you can see, oh, we have now 50 branches or maybe 52. I don't know if the <laughs> first two that are already there count. That's better. A lot more branches. Good. They all have the same length. That's not too nice. And they're also everywhere. We want them. We don't really want branches at the bottom of, of the trunk of the tree, right? So let's go back up to the branches. And as you can see, if we follow the, the, the line here, I actually put them into a so-called trim curve node. Let me quickly uh, disconnect this so we can look at it as, as uh, God made it. <laughs> and there's this end slider here. And um, yeah, do I need to explain more? I don't, I guess. And there's another node that we are going to take a quick look at here. I'm going to drop in a spline parameter node. And this spline parameter node comes with three outputs. Index, if you have like vertices on your line, uh, length, which would return in this case 0 to 35 in meters because that's how long our tree is. And factor that does the same thing, though it does it from 0 to 1, which fits perfectly with this thing, which, is, which also goes from 0 to 1. So factor goes in the end. Now they are short at the bottom and long at the top. Well, I mean, it still doesn't look like a tree, but it's a little better. So let's make some space. You can already see this funky RGB uh, curve that I put down here. And let's explore that for a moment. If I just drop it in here, nothing changes as expected. Um, you can do a couple of things. Now let's, for example, turn completely down. And now the length is zero everywhere. And let's turn this one up. And suddenly the long branches are at the bottom and the short branches are at the top. And maybe we can go even crazy and do this. Uh, let's put this to like this spiky shape and it's difficult to see but now we have short at the bottom, short at the top and long in the middle. And you might realize, wait a minute, this is like a profile essentially just turned on the side 90 degrees. So indeed, let's maybe do some shape like this. Um, I like to keep like a couple of short stubby branches down here. This will give a little bit of irregularity later on. Um, nice, this is good so far. Now, you might wonder, wait a second, this one seems to be the other way around. Well, we get to that uh, later on. Good first step for our tree, I'd say. Next up, I want a little bit of wobbliness, a little bit of randomness, and 
yeah, we are going to do this thing that you probably already expected. We're going to displace it. Now, um, ignore, 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 ignore. Back here, we have a set position node. Um, and the input here is just essentially everything you can see right now. That's what's coming in through this line. Ha, what I forgot to say, I hope it fits in with continuity now. You also have to resample the curve before you put it into a set position offset thing here. Um, otherwise you don't have the necessary detail to actually displace it with. So if I mute it, you can see that I've just now shifted the entirety of the branches. So we need uh, uh, to resample the curve and I'm unmuting it. And wow, you can see something crazy happens. The, the, the tree goes apeshit and this comes from this noise texture input. Now, if I just put in a noise texture like this, uh, it's a little lackluster right now. So if I plug in position into this vector input, it's well, it, nothing happens because um, this position input is what's in here by default, even if it's not connected. That's like the uh, standard texture coordinate essentially. And to this I added um, this seed value essentially. And as you can see, even though it's very subtle, um, it kind of wobbles when I add a number to it. And, and that's where I can create different variations of the tree, right? Next up, I have subtract 0.5. Um, let's ignore that for a second. Let's first of all multiply it because that's maybe the first thing you do, right? You have a noise texture, you say it's a little weak, so multiply it by a high value. Why does it jump away? So out of this noise texture and RGB come um, on all three channels a noise from zero to one, very colorful, very nice. If you push something into all three axes, but just in, in the positive direction, it will jump a little bit forward on the X, a little bit sideways on the Y, and a little bit upwards on the Z axis. So it will always kind of tend to Oh, well, this orientation is correct. It will always kind of tend to shift diagonally upwards, especially if I multiply this value and strengthen this effect um, because it never has an opportunity to actually also go in the negative direction. So from the zero to one value that comes on all three channels, we're going to use a subtract uh, from the vector math. That's important because otherwise we um, would combine these three channels into one if we use uh, math, just a math node. So subtract 0.5 on all three channels and now suddenly it jumped back down to the origin more or less and now even if I multiply it and make it stronger it doesn't wander further off. If I would do that um, without this subtract node you can see that it just disappears into nothingness. Here you can obviously adjust the strength. You maybe also want to expose like the scale of the noise texture to have like a more gentle swaying tree to something that is very intense maybe. Displacement done. I mean we're getting somewhere. We are pretty good so far I think. Next up is the thickness. And if I go further, you can see this curve to mesh node, also a very basic node. I use a profile curve that goes in here, uh, in this case a circle, and that's now the profile of our branches here. If I change the res resolution, I can make it triangles or put in any other shape, but I mean, it's a tree. I think, I think circles are fine. We can get the same spline parameter node that we previously had, use the same factor input. However, um, we have a round uh, input here. So this won't be compatible. You need uh, one of these square packs in order to actually change the data dynamically. There's a set curve radius node that has exactly this input. So let's plug in the factor and it's looking a lot better even though it is the wrong way around. So let's reverse the curve, put it in here. If it would be only that, you know, it would be pretty simple. However, um, the major problem that we have right now is down here with these short stubby branches, we have a pretty thick radius that kind of fits onto the trunk. However, up here where the trunk itself um, gets thinner, the branches still are very, well, they all have the same thickness. So even up here, they have are very fat and stubby. This fact makes it a little bit more annoying and complicated to deal with. It's not that difficult, but for now, let's actually remove all of that stuff here and uh, go back to this stadium because we have to do it a little bit earlier. It's, luckily, it doesn't matter where we set the curve radius. And so indeed, when it comes to the trunk, we are back at the trunk. I actually just um, did it right here. I um, used the same trick, set a curve radius, uh, factor input from spline parameter. Uh, the little difference here being that I actually clamped it so it doesn't get infinitely thin at the end, so it's not that spiky. Well, as you can see, yet again, the branch is the wrong way around. So Yet again, I reversed the curve. Next up, we want to do the exact same thing for the branches. So let's take a look at the branches. And up here, we have yet again, taper branches. Let me uh, remove the spoilers and remove that and uh, unmute this, both of these again. And you can see, wonderful, we're almost at the same stadium as before. 
However, weirdly now the long branches are down here at the bottom and not up at the top. We reversed this curve, which also means that we reversed this uh, RGB curves value. That's the reason why this one was the other way around. So let's uh, remove that and plug in the one that I've prepared here. And now it's the right way around again. Also another thing that you might realize is that this doesn't come directly from a spline parameter, but actually from a captured attribute because I captured um, the thickness of the trunk um, a little bit light right after this resample curve here from uh, from this value that was already clamped and that sounds complicated what i'm saying is if we want to make the branches thinner when the trunk is thinner as well we need to access the data from the trunk at this point however if i just use the spline parameter here i'm obviously just looking at the curve itself so this doesn't really help us so i need the spline parameter of the trunk at that point and this one i can only get if i well capture it right here before we actually go into the instance on points because now in here in this capture attribute now we actually have this the, the position of our spline of the trunk so let's take it and feed it into the clamp in the maximum value and now the thickness of each branch can never surpass the thickness of the part of the trunk it's coming out of the most things that you have to do now is expose all those different features and make them more interesting. You can, for example, um, as I said, expose maybe these values to make them longer or shorter. And I really, I would just recommend play around. You can probably take it as far as you want. Another thing that I did is I created some roots, which I did um, simply by taking a mesh circle and um, instancing uh, curve lines onto them. If I increase this radius of the curve circle, you can see it's essentially just a circle. I can increase the vertices of this circle to get more roots here. And in order to make them all point outwards of the circle, I used this uh, align Euler to vector setup with the normal of the curve. These five degrees here are meant to make it actually point downwards. And the length of the roots you can control by this factor here. I've realized uh, the instances because I think that's always a good idea after instance on points. Um, second of all, I've also reversed the curve for the same reason um, I had to reverse the rest of the things because um, the tapering went in the wrong direction. And I've also set the curve radius the same way for the roots. And I've also resampled the roots so we can displace them. Why do I put the branches and the trunk in the same displacement group, but I have to duplicate all of this stuff again for uh, the roots. That's a little bit annoying. This displacement also goes in the z-axis. And if I displace uh, the roots in the z-axis, they are not really on the floor anymore now, are they? So I had to create a second set of displacement, combine them all together, and they feed just in the same curve to mesh node. And that's how I made the roots. Also not all that astonishing, I believe. Last but not least, the remeshing and, and that one couldn't be simpler. First of all, mesh to volume and then volume to mesh. That's it. These settings here are kind of important, I think. I've um, chosen a very high voxel amount because that doesn't really change the resolution. Um, the resolution comes from this remeshing, from this volume to mesh stuff. So this just makes it more precise, but it doesn't add more geometry. Uh, I pr you can probably overdo it still, but you know, whatever. What I found is that the voxel size also matters greatly. If I set it too big, obviously, well, the tree falls apart. If I set, oh, oh, I think I crashed the program. That's what happens when you play around. But if I set it too small, as you can see right here, you can actually start to see like the 3D grid of um, the remeshing uh, appear on the tree. And that isn't too good. So you have to find like a good in-between value that fits for you. So it's uh, neither broken or blocky. Now I have to restart the thing. Praised be the autosave. Something that you can consider. Maybe it's working for you, maybe not. I have uh, tried experimenting around with feeding it through a dual mesh because it seemed to smooth it out somewhat. It also reduces the amount of phases a little bit. So try out if you like that. Last of all, set it to shade smooth because well, otherwise it's blocky, even though that's looking nice as well. And then set your material. Then I scaled it down uh, so it's not 35 meters. Now the ends of these branches are pretty thick and you could go back all the way where I tapered the branches which uh, where I have this minimum clamp value and turn it down to zero and they indeed get a little bit more pointy 
but now you see that there are like disconnected parts which is the initial reason why I did this I mean okay you can maybe work with 0.5 or something what I found to work um, out though is just using a smooth modifier I used Laplacian uh, smooth and if I smooth it let me un unhide it you can see that it thins down everything and it additionally also makes it smoother which is kind of nice and that's how you can do a tree um, I promise that uh, <laughs> the next ones are going to be a little bit more organized again <laughs> have a nice have a nice day i guess <laughs>